We're back at the beautiful Middle Island Country Club in Middle Island, New York. And this time, I'm meeting with Dan O'Neill of the O'Neill team at Signature Properties. That's right, the man, the myth, the legend. As good as he is at selling houses, he's even better at playing golf. So I've got my work cut out for me today. Uh, I think maybe I'll load him up with a bunch of Bloody Marys and I'll be able to take him on this one. It's tea time, so let's get started with real estate agents in golf carts drinking Bloody Marys. I'm Kyle Kelly, the associate broker for the island-wide team at Realty Connect USA. I've spent the last 11 years perfecting my real estate game, but unfortunately, my golf game has really gone to sh This is my attempt to incorporate more golf into my work life. So hang on while we spoil a good walk while under the influence of real estate, talking about cocktails and talking about anything else that comes up with some of my closest friends in the real estate industry and hopefully some decent golfers. This is Real Estate Agents in Golf Carts, drinking Bloody Marys. Dude, what are, you, what are you talking about? John, come on, man. We have a tea time in 20 minutes. Ah, you cancel on me now? All right. No, no, we'll try to get around in next week. Let me see if I can get somebody else to play. Let's see if I get Dan O'Neill. I know that kid loves to golf. Yo, Dan, what's up, buddy? How you been, man? Uh, listen, I got somebody canceled on me at tea time. I got in like 20 minutes over at Middle Island. How fast do you think you can get here? Was that fast enough? Absolutely, brother. How are you? <laughs> you ready to play around? Let's go. Oh, you got the pro set with you, too. Oh, I'm going to kick your ass. Oh, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, you been playing a lot or what? Uh, not really, to be honest with you. It's, uh, I mean, as you know, right now it's pretty busy, but too busy to play golf, huh? Yeah, I'm yeah. trying, trying that to was, make some time. That was the idea of this, actually, was how can I incorporate more golf into my work day? <laughs> yeah, as long as we get out bright and early, real estate doesn't start till 10 a.m., right? It's a genius idea. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I've actually never played here, too, so I'm excited. Oh, one of my favorite tracks, down and down. They got actually, uh, three nine-hole tracks over here. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll just pull nine, get a couple hours in. Oh yeah. Let's see where they put us. All right. Stuff. Again. Ready to head on down? Go see that starter? Let's do it. Let's get this going. So we're gonna delete that first tee shot that I just had. Uh, just straight from the car to the uh, tee box. I have 30 people heckling me. <laughs> Kyle told everyone I'm on the tour. That's why we have the cameras. This woman told me her son, who's eight, swings better than me. So we're gonna delete that whole entire scene, and we're just gonna start from uh, from over here. So pretend that never happened. Yeah, that's how they hit him on the tour. Tour pro. Uh, yeah, I'm not a pro. You're joking. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Well, I know some people that can hit a lot further than him in college. That was a bad shot. Don't, ju <laughs> don't judge me off that. I didn't They're want to heckling you, O'Neal. <laughs> that was a bad shot. <laughs> just speaking it into existence. That was brutal, man. Listen, you don't have to be a star golfer. You can be a star realtor and make better money. That's very true. <laughs> but if, call, if real estate never works out, I would like to be a star golfer. Uh, like I said, I want to make the champion store. <laughs> I got 20 years. I'm sure if I play enough over the next 20 years, I can make it. How many you got on your team now? Um, 11. 11. 11, yeah. 11 and an admin and a transaction coordinator. Awesome. Transaction coordinator is in-house? Yeah. Yeah. I just did the same thing. So I've got an admin, a TC, and six. And I'm actually bringing on one more tonight. So it'll be at seven tonight. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. My thing is I haven't really been recruiting at all. Um, I mean, I never really have, but it's something that, oh. you know, I think next year I'm going to try to start actually doing because uh, everything happened so fast. You know, I felt um, if I started recruiting too many people, it would lose, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, do right by the people that are on the team now. Right. So I kind of capped at like a certain number. A certain number, excuse me. Um, I did the same. I set a goal of 20 this year, and within three, four months, I said, uh-uh, scale that yeah, back. 20 Seven is, to 10 is like yeah. maybe, you know. That, that's all it. you need. Yeah, well, you know. For now. 20 is starting a brokerage, right? Right. It's the same thing. <laughs> I don't need to start a brokerage yet. All right. They're making room Ugh. for us. We're ready to hit. Nice shot. That's Hang a really on. nice shot. Hang on. Come around. Uh oh. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Did you see that kick? No. You're on the green. No way. Kicked out of the tree. <laughs> 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 the <laughs> members bounce. Let's go. Hell yeah. 
That shot getting on the green was like getting a uh, three and a half percent FHA buyer and accepted offer. Listen, I, I, <laughs> I've gotten a few of those in this market, so. That's why you're the best of the best. Nice putt. Mm. Nice roll. Just kidding, we're good. <laughs> Let's go. You're gonna let me get the lead. Out of <laughs> Let's go. So I, I know your, your team's on fire right now. I know you guys came out of the gate as soon as they opened up the world from uh, from COVID, mm -hmm. just firing, right? And we actually talked a little bit during the shutdown about whether we should be taking listings, holding them off market, right? We, yep. I think we actually had opposing views on that. What do you think the future looks like, man? Do you think there was repose for a crash? Do you think repose for a correction or gonna maintain for a little while? I mean, I mean, the market has to correct itself no matter what. Um, I don't really see a crash coming, but again, you know, I haven't been around as, as long as you. I wasn't here for 2008. Uh, listen, I'm not a dinosaur either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that wasn't meant like any, any type of way. But no, you know, so I, I'm not really sure, you know, what happened in 2008, 2009. I wasn't actually a part of it. But what I see happening is definitely a correction. I mean, it has to. We've been in this crazy seller's market, you know, the craziest probably in a decade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really no fun for anyone except for listing agents or sellers. So I think there's definitely going to be a correction, but I just, I don't see a crash coming. I mean, I, what about you? It's just hard to catch up to the demand. You know, I'm a stats guy. I always look at the numbers. And right now we're looking at 14% lower inventory than normal, mm -hmm. but a 260% higher demand. So how do you catch up to that, right? Exactly. We're, we're not gonna get a flood of listings all of a sudden. No. Even if, even when the foreclosure moratorium lifts, right. that's not gonna cause massive amounts of inventory to come out. There is not, there's no shadow inventory like there was back in like 08, 09. You know, I got my license in 09, 10, yeah. somewhere around there. And there was this talk of shadow inventory. People have equity. Yeah. You know, even if they have to get out, they can take their time figuring out where they're gonna There's go. There's been so. people that we sold the house to, you know, a year ago and they've turned around and now sold their house and they made 40 or 50 grand. Yeah. That's only in a year. And yeah. that, that's that's never been seen before. So I think a lot of people are still gonna have a ton of equity. Uh, and I don't see a crash coming. And, and more importantly too, like, you know, agents like yourself, agents like me, our teams, if you do the right thing, you know, constantly and you're always doing the right thing, you're still gonna be busy. So even if the Absolutely. market does crash, even if something does yeah. happen, you and I, Good. our teams, the, the people that are really doing the right thing, they're gonna be successful no matter what. You are the king of the Instagram story, the, the, the quick little YouTube post. See you uh, diving in pools with your suit on and floating around on floaties, out on jet skis, riding horses. Yep. What's next, man? How do you outdo that? <laughs> I don't know, it's a good question. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, keep being unique and different and just keep trying to make these videos that, uh, you know, either go viral or show the houses to as many people as possible. There, there we, we go. go. Now we're golfing. Nice shot. There Let's go. go. So, um... But yeah, I mean, the social media thing, like I said, you know, that video that I thought was gonna, like, flop, that wasn't even a good video, I didn't even want to post it. Wound up getting 40,000 views. The one you know, of you so falling into the pool? Yeah, so it's just something that, you know, everyone's always in their own head, like, oh, should I post this, should I not post it? You know, that's post a prime it. example. Yeah, post yeah, it. Post it. Because you never know. Time, right? You know how many times I recorded something and didn't post, recorded something, post something like, oh my God, I had years worth of content that I've never put out there because I was afraid of what I'd look like, what yeah. I'd sound like. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it's just a matter of getting out of your own head because really nobody cares. I love Kyle Kelly. Always. Always have. I did one of my second deals, I think first or second or third deal with him. He's helped me out with YPN. He's helped me out with my business, mentorship. He's Mr. Over-Involved. I'm gonna kick his ass in golf today. That'll work. Let's go. Oh, get up. Oh, your money, actually. Wow. Dude, this guy is hustling me, man. <laughs> you gotta be hustling me. I love competition. As much as we're colleagues, Holy we're competitions out, out here, baby. <laughs> How
How do we have, we have two cameras here, we don't know where the ball went. <laughs> <laughs> we need a drone and a four caddy. Crap. Shot. Come back around. Good shot. There you go. Get out. Playing bocce over there. This guy Kyle, man, hasn't had a bad shot yet. I'm getting hustled out here. Thank God we didn't put any money on it. So I don't know if you're aware, but there have been some changes to the LIBOR structure. Uh, but we actually just won a big battle on the board of directors and saved the YPN as a division. Yeah, so Chris we're definitely me. looking forward to McSherry, you, the future of YPN really taking over and becoming the leaders of our organization. Well, it's all because of you guys. I mean, if we didn't have you guys' leadership and mentorship, none of it would even be possible, so. We just gotta get you winning that uh, 30 under 30 next year. Like I said, we're here for, to support you. Well, that's actually going in. There you go. <laughs> oh there you God, go. Dude. Are you no kidding pressure. me? All right, through three, Kyle's beating me by one. Somebody uh, should have put odds on Kyle here. They would have won a lot of money. <laughs> it's all right, let me get warmed up. I'll put this to rest. A nice shot. Just step on his throat, we're gonna beat him finally. I love him, but I have to beat him today. I can't go home a loser. Not today. All right, quick update. Hottest day of the year out. Through four holes, Kyle Kelly is up by one. It's only 94 degrees. No shade, no wind out here. I mean, if I don't win, I might have to leave New York. I might have to move down sure. south, I don't know. I'll, I'll take over operating your team, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I might, I'm, I'm gonna be done for in this town if I lose. <laughs> Need this. I was just talking a lot of smack too. I missed it. Oh, oh my God. Little choke action. I can't putt today. Uh, <sighs> unbelievable. He's still up one. Still up one? Get the camera out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Nice shot. Nice putt. What are you, inspecting your clubs over there? <laughs> Performance surgery over here. <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, inspections, I love Chris Hantis from APRO. Yeah? Yeah, I've been using him for years. He does my personal home inspections as well. Um, actually, why don't we hear a little something from Chris now? Hey, everybody. Chris Hantis, APRO Home Inspection Services. 24 years in business, I know homes. All of our equipment is state of the art. We use infrared technology in all of our inspections. A thorough inspection of your home, inside and out, will be compiled into a detailed report sent to you in a very timely manner. Don't even think about buying a home without a proper home inspection. We will give you thorough, reliable, quality service at a competitive price. Call me, Chris Hantis, A Pro Home Inspections, 631-868-0499. Don't buy a home without us. So, uh, what do you think about the idea of work-life balance? Does it even exist? <laughs> I mean, if you ask, you know, some of the most successful people, they'll say no, and then others, you know, have that balance. I think it's all about, uh, you know, maturing and finding it. For me, I don't right now, and I'm sure you're probably the same. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a little bit different with a wife and kids, you know, versus... You, you, you're forced to actually uh, try yeah. to balance out a little bit when you have the wife, the kids, and everybody demanding something from you. Right, and that, that's kind of my problem right now is, um, you know, just trying to find that balance and trying to give myself a little bit of a break because I did get burnt out, and it's not fun. You know, you don't want to pick up the phone, you don't want to talk to anyone, you don't want to do anything. And uh, that was kind of like my major goal for this year. It wasn't transactions, it wasn't, you know, nothing numbers-wise. It was really just to be able to figure out how to give myself a little bit of a break and, and implement the systems and structures to do so. You know, I hired a coach this year and uh, every quarter, you know, we did our yearly goals. We did, uh, you know, our, our uh, business plan. Right. But every quarter we review where are we, mm -hmm. what, did we hit our goals, what are we on track for and what are we planning next? And yeah. uh, they always ask, um, you know, what, 
what do you need to do more of, what do you need to do less of, right? Mm. And when I said, I need to take more time off. I need to spend less time at midnight in the office trying to wrap right. up my day, yeah. you know? And, and yeah, I'm trying to find that balance too, even 11 years license. See, I think, I think we all are, to be honest with you. That's kind of like the biggest thing. Um, I went out and bought a boat this year. It's still not in the water yet, but at you? least I bought the boat, you know? Oh <laughs> so my God. we'll see if I get to use it at all, you know? <laughs> I think that's the biggest problem that we all face. You know, it's, uh, something that I want to work on and I want to get out and do this more too, right. you know, and this is fun and it's networking, it's relaxing, it's, you know, all of the above, but. Yeah, yeah you want to go first? Yeah, I guess I'll try to lead the way. Okay. All right, through five holes, tied up. I let Kyle have his fun. We talked real estate. Oh, uh, Dan sinks one putt and all of a sudden he's talking now it's, shit. Now it's time to, I've been talking shit the whole day. <laughs> now it's time to put the pressure on. So I know you, uh, you talk a lot about your brand using social media for that and whatnot. Yep. What about lead generation? Like, I know that's for the future, right? And making sure that you're you're building a nice foundation to keep this going. Mm -hmm. You know, I never bought a Zillow lead, a Realtor.com lead, anything like that in my life. Right. But I'm realizing as the team gets bigger, mm -hmm. and I need to provide more, I need to find some other sources of leads out there because I'm, I'm sphere and, and referral. Right. You know, I, people who know me like and trust me are people that work with me. Yeah, exactly. So how about you? I mean, it's very similar. Um, all the leads that I get from myself are referrals, sphere of influence, and a big, big part of it is social media. I mean, if I showed you like my DMs or just somebody sees a video and then refers me to a friend or a family member, so that's where I get all my business from. And then as far as the team, yeah, you have to be kind of, you know, the lead gen. Um, that rain so you teach them obviously how to get their own leads and my team is doing a really good job of it right now, which is good, but I'm also spending a good good amount of money on Zillow. It's just to keep them busy, you know, right. just to keep them getting experience and seeing what's out there. And What's your conversion rate on Zillow lead? Uh, it's tough to say because we get so many yeah. um, and a lot of them really aren't that great of leads. But, um, you know, it's I don't even know how to make a call. Yeah, uh, I really don't even convert. know the metric on it, to be honest, just because it's really hard to judge, like, what's an actual lead and who's just, right. what's an agent calling in or, you know. I've been having some success with social media advertising, target marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, really, and more it's with my listings, targeting who the right buyers are for those listings. Oh, absolutely. And then you can only sell one of them. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah, the team works the rest of them. So yeah. that's where I'm focusing a lot of my energy. To go off here. Ah, uh, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Now nah, you'll be good. Oh, there it is. That's the money shot right there. There it is. Kyle's going down. You're spending money on Zillow leads. Yeah. Your team's uh, hopefully converting them, right? They're doing a really good job converting the ones that are, you know, that are the real deal. But obviously right now it's a tough seller's market, so most of those leads that are coming in are buyers. Right. And it is an incredibly competitive market, but they're doing a really, really good job of converting it. You know, if I'm even able to break even on it, I'm happy. It just, it, it keeps them busy, it gets them experience, it gets them out in the market so they see the inventory, what's available, what prices are going for. And it gives you experience too, because I'd rather somebody do their first couple of deals off of Zillow with somebody they don't know, as opposed to like a referral or family or friend, you know? Yeah. If we turn this into a, I'm just answering a text message and clicking buttons industry, yep. then that's what it's going to become. You can't replace that face to face, that nose to nose, like really making it happen in front of a, of a potential client, a potential right. buyer, a potential seller. Agreed. Unless we let them replace it. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Zillow is one day going to replace us. No, I'm kidding. No. Nope. Gonna... <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh no. Shanked it a little bit right, but on the fairway still, we're good to go. Golf is harder than anything. This guy is a golfer today. Yeah, now, now I'm getting warmed up. <laughs> oh shit, now I'm getting warmed up. He's on in three, I'm on in four off the green. <laughs> I love Kyle Kelly, Mr. Overinvolved. He's a mentor to me. He's family. I hate to do this to him, but I did call it. I just said, let me get warmed up. I mean, look at this, come on, you know? Get in there, get in there. Nice roll. You're up two? It's up two.
Whoa! High fly ball, deep to left field. It'll play. Sing for the push. Good. Good round. We didn't even get to have a Bloody Mary out there. No, not yet. We say we hit the clubhouse, go grab a nice spicy Bloody Mary made to you by one of our special guest bartenders. Oh yeah, let's do it. Maybe they can help me putt, too. What's up, guys? Tom Graff from New York. Ruby also works there. We come uh, today with a very basic, easy to make Bloody Mary that you could drink all day on the golf course. You ready? I'm ready. All right. So we'll first, we're gonna use the shaker here. We got the, we got the Worcestershire. Tabasco. Peppers. Lemon. Freshly squeezed lemon. So. <laughs> Horseradish. Now Ruby's gonna throw some tomato juice in there. I'm gonna add the vodka, cause you're be cheap with that. About two ounces. All right, we're ready for the toppings. We have the cocktail onions. We have the, what are they called? Cocktail pickles. Cocktail pickles and pickled corn, <laughs> baby corn. Real simple, like we said before. Thank you. Grab one of these puppies here. And that's how we do it at the York, guys. Back to you. Got a little kick to it. It's actually good. Ah, I don't even like Bloody bad. Marys, and this is actually really good. But as we order the Bloody Marys on real estate agents and golf carts drinking Bloody Marys, uh -huh. Dan O'Neill tells me, I don't really like Bloody Marys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's all right because he's a good golfer right? yeah, <laughs> and a good realtor. So. <laughs> so I was just being honest, but this is actually really good. I'm actually yeah, enjoying this. It was a great day out there, too. It was an honor, a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was a ton of fun. I was incredibly impressed with your game, especially if you're not playing. Really great day out there. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, it was a pleasure. Join us next time on Real Estate Agents and Golf Carts, drinking Bloody Marys. This has been a Sky Limitless Media Production.